I got the RPM monitoring working on the new STM 8S001 J3 out. There's the IC. There's the motor. It's a BLDC 2012 or 2048. I can't remember. It's a number, not a year. Here is the PWM square wave signal coming out of the BLDC that corresponds with speed. So when I apply some braking to the motor, you'll see it change. Yep. And right there, you'll see that the frequency is about 88, maybe 89. Oh, rising a little bit. So here is what's going on. I have the STM 8S connected via an FTDI converter and sending UART messages. The FTDI converter is converting them to, I don't, I can't remember, SPI maybe or ITC, whatever the USB protocol is going to here. And then I just have it open in Arduino IDE. This is not my development environment. It's just a nice serial monitor tool that I'm using right now. And I just select that port uh, and it, they show up here. And we'll do another quick brake test and see if it responds. Yep. I basically just have this printing out every three seconds or so. Um, but it is, uh, you know, constantly. This is an interrupt based um, measurement system right now. So here's what's going on. We have our... timer interrupt registers, interrupt vector, and in there is an interrupt that I have mapped directly to timer to uh, input capture. And so every time timer to channel three, which is mapped to pin five on the, uh, the chip, it triggers the capture compare flag three and that uh, triggers the interrupt vector that I've written for it and in that interrupt vector we let me see all I'm doing is let's see here nope this is the non-handled interrupt in the dot C. All we're doing in that interrupt is getting doing the get capture on timer two, three, and doing a time difference calculation, just one little calculation. This is to handle overflow events. And this is if the OXFFF overflow event register isn't on, I believe. I'm not 100% sure what the question mark and colon is, but yeah. Um, then I do last capture equals current capture. Um, all three of those variables are externally, external volatiles uh, that are defined within the main.c. So I can pull any of them whenever I want from the main.c, but all I'm doing is every three seconds, I'm grabbing, so this is my timer to, my non-blocking timer to, uh, to trigger a UART message. And then what I do here is I just grab the um, time difference, if it's not zero, and calculate frequency from it. And the frequency, calculation is derived from the timer to speed divided by its prescaler so it's, a, it's I believe 16 megahertz clock with a 16 X prescaler so it's going at 1 megahertz 1 megahertz divided by time difference there's a frequency and then I print it out using some UART custom functions um, that basically break break up uh, a string a float or a number into bytes and then use the existing UART send byte commands and iterates through. Um, and those are located in the UART uh, dot C. Uh, yeah. 
This is all using STVD right now. I'm just opening this in Notepad++. I'm doing a lot of coding in Notepad++ just because I'm too lazy to set up uh, Visual or what's it called? Uh, I, I can't remember the other one. You are at send number basically breaks it up into individual bytes and then iterates through them and sends them. UART send float uses is piggybacked off of UART send number and just does the integer part, a period, and then the fractional part, and then send string. Similar concept. And that's what's happening. So we now have the ability to control the RPM via a similar duty cycle. The control, the speed control duty cycle is variable frequency, fi variable duty cycle fixed frequency. So it's 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 PWM. It's the square wave is turning on and off twenty thousand times a second, and then how much of that square wave is on or off controls how much gas is applied to this motor. This motor applies to the shaft. And then that motor feeds back a fixed duty cycle variable frequency signal, 50% duty cycle. It will always look like that half and half thing. And then variable frequency. It slows up or speeds down. This then reads that. And now comes the fun part of developing a closed loop PID controller, which incorporates that feedback and then modulates the output PWM signal which is using uh, a direct timer one PWM uh, setup where timer one essentially just PWMing at this given set of values and it does not communicate with the CPU although I can update its um, duty cycle whenever needed using a double buffer. So our timer one initiation looks like this so we're basically setting up timer one to work at this specific speed that we want and then we're telling it to just every time it hits that C that capture control reload value to change the output state of pin seven um, ac accordingly and so you know the timer is basically running in it starts from zero, it runs, it hits a value that I've set called the CCR capture control reload value, and then it changes that duty cycle state. It goes boop, and then it keeps going until it hits something called an ARR, which is an auto reload register, and then it resets the value and resets the timer. So that's how it works. It goes CCR, change state, goes ARR, change state, reset and it is directly linked to the output pin. So um, it's gonna just do its thing until I tell it to change that CCR. Um, and we'll do that via a double buffer so we never have a read-write conflict. That is the situation. So yeah, now I need to do the, um, the fun part, which is um, the PWM. Uh, the PWM is, it could be just a, or sorry, P PID. The PID could be just a PI, uh, proportional integral controller. It doesn't need to be crazy complex. It doesn't need to be running all the time. Really, all it needs to do is, so since the signal that controls this, the, the uh, drive signal, is, is akin to the gas, each sculpture is gonna have a different um, like mass, and it's gonna require a different amount of sort of thrust to rotate. So check this out. This one has way less thrust. We'll turn that on. That signal is the same. The drive signal hasn't changed um, from the last time. Did I nick something over here? I think I might have nicked something. Because it ain't turning on. Oh, there we go. Okay, so same amount of gas as last time. Now we're going at 144 hertz, which 
I haven't done the calculations yet, but corresponds to a higher RPM, right? It's going faster. Same signal, faster sculpture. We need all sculptures, no matter of how big or chunky they are, to go at the exact same speed, um, which will be, yeah, probably around 85, somewhere around there. I can't remember. And um, once it's once we have gotten it close, we we really you know we we really just need to like refigure out the new. PWM drive signal free, uh, duty cycle for this new sculpture. So we kind of really only need to run up until we get to the target speed and we've been there for a couple of seconds and then we can turn the, P, uh, the PID controller off and it can then just, it'll, it'll stay there because the sculpture's mass isn't going to change. And then maybe once every five minutes, you know, or once every minute, we check to see if the RPM has, um, has drifted out of the out of a threshold a band you know a dead band zone um like you know because weird things happen Ch pressures in rooms change uh you know air dra uh, parasitic drag coefficients change with temperature and humidity so maybe it slowly does you know over the course of an hour or two drift far enough that the illusion doesn't work anymore so we do need to check semi-regularly um if it's within the target range and then We'll just run that PID, you know, again for another second or two until it is back in the target range. The reason we don't want to constantly run it is because I did a test before with an Arduino, and I did this exact same setup with this um, BLDC motor. And when the B when the PID is running, it whines. The motor whines. Um, it's turning it on and off really fast, and it's basically just I don't know if it's like a capacitor or something inside of the BLDC motor. It doesn't matter. It whines like a pretty high pitched, loud, aggressive, bad sound. So that's the whole situation. Um, once I, I, there are no PID libraries for this microcontroller specifically, the STM 8S001J3, but there are PID drivers for other STM uh, controllers. And so, <coughs> You know, depending on how lightweight they are, I may just kind of be able to port it over to this c controller and then figure out the correct, you know, the appropriate register values and other things like that. Um, and then, you know, fuck around with it until it works ish. That being said, my main concern now is this our space. When I export these, uh, when I compile and build this sketch, we get a debug folder and then a bunch of these little whatevers. I'm not even sure what a lot of them are. What I do know is that the test.map is like a memory map. And it lets us know what's going where and stuff like that, the breakdown. When this value right here, well, I don't know if it's just this value. Essentially, we only have eight kilobytes of memory that we can use. And so what I think happens is when dot text dot constant and this second dot constant for whatever reason, um, and then maybe dot init, maybe these, I'm not sure. Um, basically, when they equal eight kilobytes or greater but more importantly when dot text gets past seven kilobytes seven thousand bytes i get a text overflow compile compiler error this is the cosmic c compiler that's set up with stv d st visual developer and i get this thing that just says hey yeah you don't have enough room on your microcontroller for this and so you know, you have these m modules, and so you have dot text is 80, dot length is 520, uh, sorry, dot CLK, you have a 520 dot text size. CLK is the clock driver, that's important. IT is the interrupt, that's important, 129 kilobytes. Timer two is the timer for the uh, input, the frequency input PWM, which I just figured out. That's 913 
And these are after pairing all these libraries down. UART1 is to communicate, that's pretty big. Unfortunately, what may end up happening is I have basically have to go in blind with the PID controller, get as far as I can using UART communications and like having the ability to do, uh, you know, debugging via text message. Um, and then, you know, at some point basically just get rid of this and use PID so that I have enough room to compile. WWDG, you know, that's watchdog timer, I believe, watchdog something. I'm not using that at all. And so when the compiler basically says, oh, you're not using any of that, it gets rid of it. Perfect. Time one, really important. That's the uh, timer one output. I may be able to pare that down a little bit, but not a lot. I've already pared it down once. Um, I left a couple of feature functions in there that are supposed to help me during the PID uh, development, but you know, I may not be able to keep those in. And then um, IWDG00, GPIO, that's basically very pared down. It's just me re um, reestablishing, reinitializing the two GPIO pins that I'm using as their new alternate functions. Um, flash, not using that. Main. Oh, that's our main. You know, our main thing is pretty short. It's not using much. And then what I don't know is what the heck these are. What is CMOLKS and CTOF and FAD? Because they're taking up size, and I don't know what the heck they are. Look at this one, LDIV.0. What the heck are these? Do I need them? Can I bring them down in size? Here's the size of my functions. Not terribly huge. You aren't want to initialize. Maybe bring that down a little bit, but we're talking about, you know, tiny little amounts here. Yeah, so some of these can be possibly gotten rid of. OC init probably needs to stay. Forced OC config can go. You know, I might be able to get like another 30 or 40 out of this one. Those are all pretty important, to be honest. I think I use every single one of those. Oh, send floats huge. That's so weird. It looks so small. Mm. Good to know. See, this is why the map is helpful. It helps you figure out where all your size is. fact that I call UART send number in UART send float seems to mean that I don't get to benefit from the UART send number pre-existing. It kind of seems like I'm um, <laughs> it's like counting UART send number in itself and here towards my total size. It's like compiling it into this function. Ooh, it seems like it's doing that every time. That's good to know. So rather than nesting functions, like if I need to do something, you know, like maybe I manually register switch the whatever that's doing when I'm using it here. And so I don't have to like have a whole ass other function. I don't know. Food for thought. I don't know what these are. Oh, we're in the same section. Hmm. So yeah, there's a uh, there's some stiff that could be worked on just about through this whole thing. Yeah, that's it. 
So, totally. I mean, I don't really understand how to cut down too much more size on this thing. I think I'm going to need to. That's, that's, that is an area that I uh, would definitely appreciate some insight from someone who knows more than me on this topic. Uh, I, and that doesn't take much. I don't know much. I'm Googling everything constantly um, and chat GPT wrangling to get anything done. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, hopefully I can get some help. So on.